Hello again and welcome to my shooting sports channel. This video is dedicated to a pistol to carbine conversion, more in specific the KPOS G2, that I bought almost a year ago um, for use with my Glock 34 Gen 4. Before going in deeper on the KPOS G2, let's uh, shoot a bit. I had a an open sight red dot, pretty cheap red dot by UTG, UTG uh, because uh, as you can see I wanted to use this combination for IPSC low velocity rifle competitions, uh, especially uh, for low velocity rifle competitions because I didn't own a dedicated uh, 9mm carbine just yet. Uh, in the meantime I decided to buy a CZ Scorpion. Uh, but more on that later. In fact, um, before buying this combo, I read a lot of reviews on it, and a lot of those reviews were pretty good. The only thing that came back quite regularly is that a lot of people were experiencing uh, malfunctions. Now, I have shot more than a thousand rounds through my Glock 34 without a single malfunction. But I am experiencing malfunctions when I use it inside the KPOS. Maybe it is due to the buffered recoil spring on the Gen 4s, but I get the impression the striker does not always fall with enough force to set off a primer when I use the pistol inside the KPOS. The Glock 34 inside this pistol enclosure is fully stock, except for the added magwell and the l size backstrap, which I had to cut off a bit uh, to accommodate the magwell. The KPOS G2 is made from lightweight aircraft aluminum. It is small and very easy to use around tight corners and small quarters. It will fit all Glocks with standard Glock accessory rails except for the 45 ACP or 10mm models. In fact, this pistol enclosure allows very effective shooting at higher speeds, which makes it perfect for IPSC SBR matches. And it is equipped with an AR style cocking handle, um, which is only effective when you actually use both your index and middle finger to cock it. Um, the forend is equipped with a collapsible foregrip that also works as a trigger protection. Other than that, this assembly and assembly is that simple. Just pull out the rear locking pin, open the locking lever to the front and rotate to vertical position pointing down and you can pull out your pistol. Just reverse this process for assembly. As I said before this uh, enclosure is made from lightweight aircraft aluminum and it is really absolutely one of the lightest pistol to carbine conversions on the market. Every now and then you should tighten the screws on the KPOS because uh, in my experience they tend to loosen up after lots and lots of shooting. And so to wrap things up, when the KPOS works, it is absolutely fantastic. It's accurate, agile. Very lightweight and easy to use around tight corners. So basically, the K Pass is just awesome. It's a great, cool little gadget to have, but its major problem remains reliability. In the following sequence, I will show you exactly what I mean by that. Malfunction 1. Number 2.
So with a total of two malfunctions during this one stage, you lose one or maybe two seconds and okay, you get used to clearing those malfunctions. But when it happens during a competition match, um, it's really not a good thing. Mind you, I don't get different malfunctions. No failure to feed, no failure to eject. I always get the same malfunction. And in my case, with the stock spring, the striker does not always fall with enough authority to set up a climber. So, to wrap things up, I like the K-Pass for several reasons, but it should be more reliable out of the box. As usual guys, thanks for watching.